Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave, and today we're going to take a closer look at the 226E. So if you saw my previous video on this engine, you'll know that I never got it running. I got it out of the box, got it on the track, had a fight with it a little bit, and then something shorted on the inside. So I took the engine all apart, cleaned everything up, and resoldered the wires. It seems to be working pretty well now. I have not run it on the layout yet, so let's check it out and see how it does. Well, if you ask me, that's not bad for something that was made in 1938. Works pretty nicely, uh, it rolled real smooth, and I'm just still psyched to have one. Now I really have to get the 225E back together so I can run them together, because that would just be cool. So let's take a look at the process of taking this engine apart, cleaning it up, and getting it back together. I've already taken it apart and cleaned it up quite a bit, uh, but I wanted to show you essentially how it comes apart. To remove the motor, the first thing you would do is take this screw out and take this post out. That post goes through these holes on the motor to keep the front of the motor in place. So on this model, you just unscrew it and slide it out. After that's done, the motor will pull out the bottom. Now you will still have a couple of wires connected uh, for the firebox light and for the headlight. You can open the front of the boiler and now that it's disconnected, you can push that through and the whole wire comes out. If you want to take it apart further, if you want to get to the firebox light, I'm going to take this screw out which lets you remove the rear truck, and then these two screws out, which let you remove this pan. Then the light should have this clip on it, and it would just be clipped there onto a tab inside. Now there should be a washer on these, so look for that. Sometimes it stays down in that hole. And then the front comes off. If you wanted to remove the front truck, you just take that screw out and it comes off. Cool thing about this engine is there's a weight inside, but you take these two screws out, flip it upside down, or right side up, and the weight will come out. Why would you remove that? Well, there are a couple of spots you can't get to with it in, like the nut for the whistle that sits on top, and also for the metal pieces that hold the handrail, if you want to take those out. And if you want to take off the boiler front, you open it up and there are two screws, one here and one there, and then the boiler front comes off. So one of the things I like about these older brush plates is the wires are attached with a little screw instead of soldering them. And I like that, it makes it a little bit easier to repair. A lot of these wires are in questionable condition. It could be a break in the insulation here. That could have been part of the problem with the engine shorting. So should I rewire this complete thing? Yes, I should. Am I going to? I, I just don't think I have the patience for rewiring the E-Unit. So I'm going to try to get it working again without taking the E-Unit apart. But I am going to take the E-Unit out for now. This is the wire that's coming up from the pickup. It does, it does seem like it could have a nick in the installation, right where it's coming through here. That also could be a possibility for a short. I am gonna put some shrink tube on there to protect it. And this is just a set of heat shrink tubing I picked up off of Amazon. Uh, I'm not gonna shrink it on there, I'm just gonna slide it over for a little bit of uh, additional production for the wire. So now if it rubs on anything, it should be okay. This motor is not very different from others. We can take the two screws to get the plate off on this side to clean the end and lubricate it. And you can take these two screws out to get the brush plate off. Uh, I've already done that and cleaned the armature, cleaned the brushes and everything. So I'm gonna leave that together now. Uh, I do have other videos where I delve into that a little more deeply if you're interested. While I've got it apart, I'm gonna check out the E-Unit. One thing to do while it's out is to check to see that there's free movement of the parts. The drum is even pretty clean. The spots that you would be concerned about are like these little copper spots. That's where they touch the fingers to transfer power. 
So I think I'm just gonna put it back together, solder it up, and see if I can get this engine going. Now we have a mess of wires here. And where do they all go? So these two yellow wires will go to the brush holders. This black wire goes to this wire from the one end of the winding. And then this wire from the pickup needs to come to here. Now it looks like what they've done is instead of having to solder here, they put a wire in so anything that gets power, you can solder to this. So I kind of got ahead of myself, Remove this wire, because remember I found a little mark on it, so I want to be sure to put some uh, shrink tube on there. And you can also just use a little piece of electrical tape if that's what you have. Nothing wrong with that, I do that quite a bit, uh, but since I have these here, might as well try to use them. There we go. Now if that was causing the issue, it's protected now. And especially if you don't want to have to resolder or anything. Be very gentle while you're working. And then just make sure these are nice and tight without over tightening. That's why I use a pocket screwdriver. There's very little chance of me really over tightening something with something like this. For each end of the wire, I stripped a little and then bent it in a loop or in a hook shape so that the two will kind of hook together. I got it soldered. I slipped this little piece of shrink tube over to protect the connection. I just heat it up a little bit. And then that wire can kind of be tucked out of the way. So then we're just left with the power. And I'm just gonna slide a piece of shrink tube up the wire just to hopefully eliminate any issues. And press the clip into place. So now we have the boiler and the wires for both lights. We use a thicker shrink tube for this spot. some point. Uh, for the time being, I can just lock it in forward and I'll be fine with that. And if it starts working better, great. And if not, I will take it apart at another time. So if you don't have a test track and want to test the motor while it's still on your bench, take your leads from your transformer and you can just stick the ground anywhere that you think will make good connection. Put your transformer up a little bit, then touch the power point on the E unit. Being careful not to touch this point right here or the lever. Just this point where the solder is. Otherwise you'll cause a short. So you can do that with the E unit in one direction or functioning. Now that I'm doing it this way, and the E-Unit's not tripping back and forth, maybe it's not an issue with the E-Unit, but uh, the conductivity through the pickup rollers, the E-Unit seems to be functioning very well. Since I was having that issue with the E-Unit tripping back and forth, I figured I'd check out the rollers. Uh, I pressed one of them off, and I'm just cleaning it up. I was wondering if it was the other style where the post goes through the center of the roller and they're two separate pieces because then it can get dirty inside but this is just one piece so i'm just going to clean it up a bit and put it back in there and then i'll clean up the other one real quick now you want it to be tight enough that it's not going to fall out but loose enough that it spins freely so you can either use the snap ring pliers to press it apart or the regular pair of pliers. 
hopefully by doing this and cleaning up these contact points, this will actually help the unit work better. Again, make sure that it spins freely, but doesn't come out. And then hopefully that will fix that issue I was having. I wanna put the whistle back on. That goes through the top there. You need to take this very tiny nut and get it in there in place. You can hold it in place with your finger. Turn the whistle, at least until it gets a little tighter. Just lay that in place and put the screws in. Everything else on these, I'm going to make sure it's snug, but I don't want it to be too tight. After all, it is a very old piece of uh, casted metal. Okay, I'm going to put that in. Now is the tricky part. It's getting everything settled back in without causing a short or having the wires rub anywhere. Now, before we go any further, might as well test it again. Well, it seems to be operating pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead, put it all the way back together. We're gonna to get the handrails down into the holes. And then we wanna put the, what is this, an ash pan, I think they call it. Just gonna put a little bit of grease on that contact point. And I'm also going to put a little up front, right there. Make sure not to pinch that when you tighten it, that it moves freely. Forget the spacer. And before I tighten it down, I like to make sure I have it right. There, no jamming, so it's good to tighten it up. Okay, everything moves without jamming up. That's always a good sign. So now the question is, is it gonna run? Let's go find out. So I love the firebox glow. That's just very neat for an engine that's as old as it is. Sure, it's just a red light bulb, but it gives a pretty neat effect. It runs very smooth.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.